Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to monitor your kitty smoke and carbon monoxide detector using my sensors. So before I get into the how-to, I'm just going to give you a quick demo. Uh, I will let you know that the carbon monoxide alarm triggers so fast uh, that it's almost impossible for me to detect um, the change by hitting the refresh on my phone here. Um, but I have sent myself an email, it is working. Um, I just want to let you know that so when you see it, it doesn't show up here on my phone. Um, that's why it's happening. But here I go with the demo. Okay, so here is the sensor device. Um, before I go and show you how to make it, I just want to give a, a big shout out and thank you to Robert. He's Service XP on the My Sensors forum. This is his his original project that I just modified slightly. Um, but without him and his code, I could have never done it. So thank you so much, Robert. Um, and I'm going to post a link to his original post so you can check it out because his method is different than mine. So if my method doesn't work with your detector, go ahead and check out his because his is slightly different and it, uh, it may just work with yours. All right, so here's the device. I'll just walk through it fairly quickly and I'm going to post a link to the wiring diagram in the video description. So if you want to build one of these yourself, you can check that out for all the details. So first we have an optocoupler. Um, that's going to separate the voltage from the interconnect wire. So that's how I'm getting the signal from the, the smoke detector is uh, connecting these two wires to the interconnect of my uh, smoke detector. So I'm going to connect the optocoupler into that and then from there it's going to go into the Arduino. And then I have two resistors here. So that's going to help filter down the power into my optocoupler. So uh, the first one is a 1K resistor and then a 330K resistor. Those are connected in series. And then I have a capacitor here. So that is a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Um, the little U is micro and the F is farad, so the UF or the microfarad capacitor. Uh, and then we just have our standard My Sensors radio here and then a Pro Mini. Now, to simplify this for myself, I have um, a 3.3 volt output on this Pro Mini. Um, it came like that. So I don't have to step down my radio to 3.3 volts because it's just coming right out of there. So I'm able to connect in 5 volts right here into my raw pin of my Arduino. And then it just feeds out the 3.3 power for the radio. So that makes this device even simpler for me. But if you had 5 volts uh, output on your Arduino, you just need a 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, and you can check out my other videos, uh, specifically my Smart Outlet video. I go through all the wiring up the radio and how I connect th things into this prototyping board here. Um, so I'll just flip it over here and show you the underside. So like I said, you can refer to my other video for all these wirings, how I, how I get all this connected in. Um, but it's fairly simple. Um, by design at least. So we have the input, um, the power input here, and then I just go into my raw pin and then ground. So ground is going to go into my optocoupler um, here. I don't know if you can see there's a little dot um, on the optocoupler, if I can get this to focus. So there's the dot. So this will be the, the source voltage from the smoke detector. And then over here, we're going to have ground and then this will go to pin 3 on the Arduino. Okay, and then I said these are connected in series, so I'll just show you that here. So the red wire is going to be the um, red wire out of my smoke detector. And that's going to go into this resistor here, and then these will connect um, under here. You can see I saw them together. And then from there, that goes into this input of the optocoupler here. And then this uh, pin here is going to go into the common or the white wire on the smoke detector. So I've just color coordinated them here, um, just basically tinned the end of these wires, um, and then I'll just put them right onto my smoke detector. So I have, I think, seven smoke detectors throughout my house, um, and this just taps right into the interconnect feature. Um, so on my smoke detector, I have black, white, and red. So the black and white are what powers it. It's the hard the power to it, um, and then the the interconnect line will connect in there. 
Okay, then my capacitor is just connected right into the um, connections on my radio here. So this is ground and this is my 3.3 volts. So then I just have the ground of my capacitor um, and then the power connected right to my radio, which you can see right here. So it's just wired right onto my radio. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The last thing I did want to mention is I hardwired my 5 volts um, from my basement. I have 5 volts easily accessible and this is going to be mounted in my basement uh, smoke detector. So I actually hardwired that in, but um, if you check out um, Service XP or Robert's post, uh, he wired his into the battery, in the battery backup. Um, so you can check that out if you don't have um, 5 volts DC easily accessible to you. Okay, I just wanted to show you my uh, smoke carbon monoxide detector quickly here, how I wired it in. So you'll notice this one's different from what I was demoing, um, but because of this interconnect module, I can have the device connected into the basement, uh, and all of it obviously still works all throughout my house to alert all the rest of my detectors um, or alarms. And then this will alert my Vera, which will send me an email or trigger any events that I want to. So what I do is I just screw in, I take off this wire nut here, and I'll screw in my red interconnect wire there. And then I'll take my white wire, and that will go to common here. Now be careful, this wire here, either shut off your breaker or make sure you do not touch the black wire. That is, uh, at least in my case, 110 volts, so that's going to shock you. Okay, and lastly, this is where I'm getting my 5 volt power from. It's just a stripped down Cat5 cable. So I just ran it over to the other corner of my basement, uh, and then that will go into my 5 volt input here. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through the code and some of the things you may want to change or at least be aware of. But before I do that, one of the things I forgot to mention when you're mounting the sensor into the smoke detector is you want to make sure you uh, cover up all of those wires and connections. Uh, whether it's with electrical tape, heat shrink, whatever you use, just make sure those are covered up so there's no shorting going on. Uh, in your electrical box. The other thing, I'm not going to cover how to upload the code into your device. Um, so my My Sensors Getting Started videos covers all that. So if you've never used My Sensors before, go ahead and check those out and you can learn how to install the libraries and everything that's required to upload the code. Alright, so uh, if you want, you can change the sketch name version um, here. Uh, and then your node ID. So if you wanted to choose a specific node number that goes to your gateway, uh, you can assign that here or just put in all caps auto and it'll assign the next one available to you. Now hopefully that should be all you need to change and everything else should just work for you when you upload it. But if you wanted to, you could go in, you could modify child IDs. Those are the numbers that will show up in your controller. Um, but it's definitely not necessary to do. Um, the other thing you may want to change is the dwell time here. So that just puts a delay in each time a command is sent to your gateway to give the radio a chance to power back up. Um, if you want to increase that or decrease that, uh, feel free to do that. Just below that we have sleep time. So sleep time is used primarily for battery powered sensors, so it puts the, the sensor in a low power state. But it also works kind of like a heartbeat um, or a, a way for you to know that the note is still working. So in the default time, it's nine hours, it'll send a an update to your controller showing that it hasn't been triggered um, but it'll change the timestamp so you can see that it's still working which is really nice. Okay so like I said before I'm using a Kitty carbon monoxide smoke alarm um, I hope that's how you say the name I'm honestly not sure um, but anyway you get the idea so I know that this will work for a lot of different models as long as it has the interconnect module so you should be able to leave the cycle counter and cycle interval uh, numbers as is and they'll just be compatible with the Kitty models. But if you have a different brand, feel free to play around with these numbers. Um, you can see in the, in the code how it all works. But basically, this will be used to detect the number of times the signal pulses. And then, at least for the Kitty models, um, that's what signifies the difference between carbon monoxide and smoke. So smoke will just be a solid um, low signal for, uh, it's about five seconds. And then carbon monoxide will pulsate um, about five times in five seconds. So if your model is a little different, you can configure those numbers here. And if you're trying to do this with a different model, the way I found out what the signal is, is I just connected my optocoupler in and then had it cycle and record the, the millis, so basically the milliseconds, and then what the signal was, whether it was a one or a zero, 
and then I could base my code off of that. So if, um, if that makes sense to you and you're using a different model, you can go in and make those changes yourself to have it work with your alarm. Okay, and lastly, if you're using a Vera like me, uh, I just want to let you know, at least in Vera UI 5, um, the S smoke does not update in the user interface of the website. So on my phone it does with all my apps, but in the user interface on the, the website it doesn't. Um, so if you wanted it to update, uh, you could use the motion instead of S smoke here. Personally, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I don't really need a live update for that. If my alarm's going off, I'm going to be hearing it in my house. Otherwise, um, I just triggered it to send me an email. So if I'm out of my house, I would check my email first rather than just scanning through um, the UI web interface. But if that's something you'd like to see, just go ahead and you can change that to a motion instead of smoke. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions, go ahead and follow the link in the video description to the My Sensors form, and you can post them there. There's lots of helpful people. Thanks for watching, everyone.